is because it was in a meeting and the topic of the discussion was um, how the unmanageability of your life from step one being I admitted I was powerless over alcohol my life become unmanageable what that unmanageability looked like mm. and um mine was basically I was just talking about where I was and then I was talking about where I am today and I was talking about like well my wife and I had to trade in our car for a van and then this van is just like you know it's so like quote like unsexy you know it's just like you know but like none of those are real problems and none of it actually bothers me and like we have to worry about, you know, like these great grown up things like and if these are the problems of my life, as opposed to like where I was like seven years ago, it's just like it's a night and day. It's like uh, actual like like there's an <laughs> there's an Andrew WK line where he says they say that people don't change, but I'm living proof that they do. And I'm just like, I absolutely, absolutely. I'm living proof that they do. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and I'm going to ask Father Turbo and Cyprian, what was your least favorite house or apartment or city or whatever that you guys have ever lived in? Yeah. Least, least, least favorite. Hey, um, you know I can go. Go. I can please. go and just say the entire state of Iowa. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Like... <laughs> I did not like Iowa. I can tell you that much. It is just the all sorts of bad things that I did not like. I'm I'm originally from Missouri and then we moved to Iowa and I didn't like any of the places I really lived in there. And not to say it's not a lovely place and there aren't some of my favorite people I've ever met. And I got baptized in Iowa and some I met my wife in Iowa. My first two children are from Illinois, right next to Iowa. Um and some some really great people and places there, but every apartment, every house, every place I've ever lived at in Iowa was just terrible. So as far as my book, the entire state of Iowa, there's just like a red X through it. Mm. And God willing, I never have to go back. God willing. You know, maybe, maybe it's my temperament or maybe I've just been lucky. I've lived in some pretty terrible places and situations. I will say that, but looking back and I think even at the time, I there was there's there's a charm to all of them you know what I mean even some that were just like where you're like this is not even livable like a person shouldn't even be living here in all of them there was a kind of a there was a kind of a, a charm to it you, you know still dug it. an aspect of it even the play even the times that were kind of even the things that were hard it was sort of like a kind of a, a sense of like you know what though but look like I can do hard like oh this is interesting i can actually do this you know what i mean sure um when i that's when i was that's when i was younger i think i've been i've been blessed for sure that since i've had a family all the place i've enjoyed all of the places that we've lived i can't say sure. my, my wife would, would would say the same we've lived not that many but um i think they've all been great they, yeah. I, I think they've all been great yeah when I first got sober, the sober living house I um, moved into, which is now lovely, this home is lovely, but the house I was living at, at the time was like that house from like Fight Club. Like it was oh, like, boy. yeah, I've, was well, I've lived in one of those pretty, dec we were essentially yeah. squatting like three, three sober dudes, like squatting in a, in like the dude that was running the house at the time was from California. So he didn't understand that like, and I didn't really either that like pipes could freeze so in the winter oh. he's like oh we're just not gonna run the heat we'll save so much money no. on not heating this gigantic drafty holy house holy it mm -hmm. both it had lots of holes and it was holy because some nuns were living there for a really long time um really? but yeah but um uh but then the priest at the time who was in charge came he was like yeah you've got to i remember being upstairs and hearing the priests say like you have got to turn on the heat and i was like 
glory to god i was like because i'm not gonna be that guy that breaks first i'm not gonna break first like can we please turn on the heat i will just sit in my room with a space heater on that's fine but like i don't know it was pretty bad there for a little while it was what like about you? what about you father um well i lived in the uh in a shooting gallery for a little while Oof, yeah that's and that bad. was that was terrible that was everything you could think of. It, it was terrible. Um, vermin, roaches, blood on the ceiling, oh. blood on the walls, um, body oh. fluid everywhere, um, drugs everywhere. Obviously, there's a shooting gallery. So that was that was pretty. <laughs> that was pretty freaking terrible, man. Yeah. And even and even though I was really into it, like that was my lifestyle at the time. I hated it. If that makes mm. sense, like oh, totally. Like I'm so I like I'm supposed to be into this rock and roll and all this stuff, and I hated it. Man. So were you like talking to other people and being like, "Doesn't this feel wrong to you? Doesn't this feel wrong?" And they're like, "No, this is cool to me." Like I'm like, you don't no, feel like because be better. No, no, because I was really deluded, man. I mean, because I mean, if I'm if I'm gonna be honest, which like Sophia said, I have to be. It wasn't even like the morality of what we were doing. It was just the uncomfortableness of it. Like, no. I like like I slept on the floor and there was roaches. You know, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, like there was a minimum always of three people there. It's a it, it was it was a hotel room. Mm-hmm. Like, in California, they had these hotel rooms in certain areas where you would just people would rent them. But it, it's just yep. a one bed. It's a studio like just hotel rooms. There's no room. Yep. It's just. Yep. Bathroom. So, like, you know, maybe if someone wanted to do some kind of business, maybe they go to the bathroom to close the door if they had a visitor. But like, everybody did just everything out. Um, it was, hmm. it was just yeah, it yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it was it was terrible. That sounds bad. It's terrible. And that my last day bad. there happened because I got arrested. <laughs> I came. I was yeah, high. It was the last time. I, it was the last time I got arrested. I I came came home there after wor- working at the shop. Uh, I was doing my apprenticeship at the time, and I come and then there's like cops and stuff there, and I'm like, what the heck? And I'm like not thinking anything of it because you know the game. The game is you play cool, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking yeah. it's not my part or not my apartment, but <laughs> and as I'm getting up there, it's like, oh, it is. And right about the time I notice like the windows broken out, whatever, I start oh, no. to turn around. It's like, hey, 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 and then they're like, you know, are you such and such? And I'm like, uh, and then I was like, all the thoughts are like, do I run? Do I lie? Whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, that's me. And then they're all come here and. My buddy broke in, trying to get his heroin, broke broke the window, got all cut up, the glass was everywhere, the management called, whatever, and um, yeah, I had, a, I, had, I had a couple outstanding warrants, and then that was it, and they're like, all right, let's go. And I was like, ah. Oh, man. And, 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 yeah. 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 A little relief to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same but at the same time it was I didn't want to get out that way. So would you have done it on your own though? That's the question. No. Had that intervention not happened, would you have Let me left tell you on something. your own? I, I was just about to say this is already Paul. This is all probably too much TMI for people or, or TMI, but it was such a god thing. I mean, mm. because that was the that was one of the catalysts that really kind of like it's just like just just gods that kind of scooped me up out of that. And it was one of those things I, I, it was completely out of my control. And actually like I went to jail for a while from, from that and I had some just wild experiences while I was there. And, you know, that's when I made that first resolve to really like, start taking responsibility for myself. That makes sense. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like up until that point, I had always blamed other people. 
it was the cops, it was my friends, it was my girlfriend at the time, whichever one that was at the time, you know, it was always somebody else's fault that I was in jail or having a problem or couldn't pay my bills or kept getting tickets, like whatever it is. And that, that, that time period was when I was like, you know what, this is my fault. And, and I just, I thank God for that too, because it was coinciding with all that too, as I was coming to the end of like, it's just a lot of stuff, including like, you know, my studies and my quote unquote practices. And, and um, yeah, it was just, the hellish, the, like the hellish, most hellish time of my life. And I am so grateful for it because it's what, it's what began to wake me up. So the refusal to be a victim, which, which is, a, a, I think a good, it's what we were talking about beforehand, the, like the malevolence of the victim narr narrative, mm -hmm. you know, that like how, even somebody like pushing on to, and I mean, we've talked about it so many times, but just, yeah, absolutely. The, oh, you're a victim. It's not you. It's everybody else. Like this victimhood needs to be catered to. And all of that is like, it's, it's causing it's, you to kill you. It, it will, real, it'll man. kill you. It's murderous. It, it will, it will kill you. It, it will kill you. I mean, like I said, you know, if God, you know, I give all glory to God. If God had orchestrated certain things in that context, in the in that whole kind of chapter of my life, I I don't know how I could have made it out because I would have been fully just ensconced in that victim. I was just I was I was a victim. You know what I mean? It was just it was I had no responsibility for anything. And that that was yeah, that was something where it's like look at looking back on it now too i haven't thought man this is like a five and had i haven't had this um i almost just literally had a flashback of like remembering moments now of my dad talking to me i never man this actually i never even thought about that like i can look back now i can think about all these times my dad was talking to me and i literally couldn't hear him like not literally forgive me i should stop saying that no, it might be it might be literally. Yeah, like I yeah, I wasn't. You might not have actually been able yeah, to hear it. You know, it, it was like it, it, it's wild because I'm like, man, he was trying to talk to me that whole time, and I was just just a wall, you know. So before we move on too far, I just want to say I got arrested in Taco Bell one time. <laughs> that was pretty cool, and yeah, and I I like when they were dragging me out. I like fought them and. Just telling everybody at Taco Bell to wait for me. I'll be back out. <laughs> yeah. My friend had some paraphernalia he threw over the counter. That's my really cool story. <laughs> but and but anyway, that was when I was younger. So things are different now. Um, but uh yeah, and I, I will say this. This is the last thing I'll say because I I there are so many things that I've looked back on and it's just like, man, that person was trying to talk to me. Mm -hmm. That person was just trying to say like, Hey, don't do this thing. Like this thing that you're getting ready to do, just don't do it. Like you're just going to end up regretting it. And I just, it's like, whatever, man, like, you know, nothing matters. So I'm just going to do it anyway. You know, like whatever decision, it doesn't really matter. And like, I think there's just like a complete lack of concept of like what a consequence was like what like things can actually go bad and you know I don't know I've had to reframe a bunch of decisions that were made for me and that I made when I was little and like I really don't want to end up I mean I do but I also don't want to end up like my dad but I also do because it's just like he was right about some stuff he was really like onto this whole like don't pay attention to like what the world says. I mean, the dude was raised, if he wasn't being raised Amish, he was being raised Mennonite. Mm. And uh, so like the concepts, the things that like he was introduced to when he like got closer and closer, like secular society and ended up in like a non-denom like church. He was just like, why would you eat cake? You know, it's empty calories. Like, why would you do that? Like, why would you have more than like 10 toys? Why would you watch TV? there's so much other things to do. Like, why would you do that? And it's like, he was kind of right about some stuff, not everything, but some stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but 
I mean, that does kind of go a little bit into our topic tonight, because I think one of the things that my dad was trying to avoid is is one good thing and this is not all about me guys so I'll, I'll be done in just a second but one of the things that my dad was really really good at to a degree was thinking for himself is he did not buy a narrative too easily he you know and like he was all over the place he didn't really think you know I can't really think of like too many things like you know he wasn't like he was pretty conservative, but he wasn't like a, like a 9-11 truther, you know, like he was an engineer. He's like, I could see how those ball buildings could fall down that way. You know, I could see because he like sat and thought about it and he's like, I could see how this could happen. And then he explained it to me and I was like, no, dad, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, no, this is the way that this works. This is the way that this would happen. And this would happen. This very easily could happen like now, blah, blah, blah. doesn't really matter. But one of the things that my dad taught me was like, and I lost it, then I got it back, then I lost it. Was just like, just because they're saying something doesn't mean it's true. Like, he was like the first person to put it like into my head that like Christians were not just like this malevolent force for evil, constantly ruining history and like, you know, constantly just like colonizing and destroying perfectly innocent civilizations that weren't doing anything wrong. And then we just came along and just destroyed them. And that's what Christians do. And so that is not the narrative that we're getting now. And oh boy, I will truly be done with this. But father, I watched the Eternals. Man, that's bad. It's very like the watchers from the book of Enoch are straight up the heroes in that oh, story. Really? Oh, yeah. Straight up in Mesopotamia in mesopotamia they show up and touch a dagger and it becomes bronzed like and they should to teach them the technology on how to do that they teach them to the technology on how to do that luciferian dude this is prometheus that, luciferian that, there's that. a straight up you know they're one of their favorite yeah. places to hang out you know one of their favorite places these eternals is babylon they wow. no joke spent a ton of time in babylon it's it, like they're not even being covert about it. It's like, no, these are demons, like they're demons. And the one of the dudes ends up helping invent the atomic bomb. And then he's like, humanity's not worth saving. They're not worth saving. It was just like, dude. And like the entire time, like my job was dropped a little bit. So see, it's wild because crazy tangent, but all this stuff you start seeing like it's not that far off i think and it's definitely not far-fetched to where um definitely on a larger scope in the you know all the west like where people could actually get down with lucifer like the kind of like promethean like you know archetype like just get down with it like yeah like we were tricked this whole time. Like we knew something was happening. We were tricked the whole time, but like, you know, Albert Pike. Oh yeah. Jesus. And like the Bible, like, oh yeah, that was the real devil. Like Lucifer's actually been the good guy the whole time. And it's just like, yes, we've been trying to talk to you through your media. We were trying to reach you through the means that you could understand. Unlike the enemy who was always, you know, lording over, you know, and stuff. And it's like, you know, people are like, oh yeah. You know, it's like, who needs the Bible when I can watch Pan's Labyrinth? You know what I mean? Like all of this, uh, and, and it just, it will just, it's, it will, it's like, that's where we're at. It's so crazy. Like if, I mean, we've all talked about it, never like full blown on the show, but yeah. If in like two years, heck, in 20 minutes, <laughs> if, it, if the, if the if the transmission was intercepted and all of a sudden you know just like signs or whatever it's like or like uh man of steel we see the ships and they start saying like hey we're here well people would be all in all in people be like man they're super man. ready for it they're, they're i mean super so ready so ready for it man which yeah. means that they which means that they will because they're ready they will they will manifest they will manifest it 
because they're ready and because they're lacking. So like David Mamadin's book, Three Uses, Three Uses for the Knife. Great, wonderful book. Actually was the reason why I started reading Joseph Campbell was because he mentioned it in that book. But he's got this line where he says, when we, it's about drama. Like what's the purpose and nature of drama? He says, when we tire of Zeus, we create the pantheon. Hmm. And, and he's just making this really strong, it's like, the, it's it really going back and thinking about that book. It's one of the strongest arguments for Christ, like in the Orthodox context that you could possibly make. Because he says that, like, if you don't have a foundational truth, which I think gets to some of the things we were talking about before, uh, b- before we started recording, that if you don't have a foundational truth, all you do is you just create this dramatic narrative. Mm-hmm. And the dramatic narrative will spin out of control. Mm-hmm. Like, it'll just get more complex and more complex and more complex and more complex, and it will have no foundation on anything. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, and eventually you jump the shark, which was another thing that we said, right? right. That, like, eventually... <laughs> eventually if you just try to keep this narrative going you will jump the shark mm-hmm. and like and that was this was something this that's that's my segue that's my that's my segue to what hit me this week and i was like i really think we need to come back i think we need to our first episode was what is the royal path but that was 30 episodes ago guys like if you don't know like 31 i think episodes ago no uh right? yes. no i'm just kidding i know so I would love to, for us to revisit, because I know that there's a lot of people who have, who are new to the Royal Path in, in terms of like the, the show that we've been doing, the podcast, to revisit like, what does this mean, the Royal Path? And also if maybe we could ground it in something that I've been seeing that's appeared to me over the last week as now Pride Month has have started, one of one of the what one of the brothers in uh in your parish, our our friend and brother in Christ, said, What if wouldn't it be great if there was a humility month? He tweeted that and I was hmm. like, Yeah, this is really good. <laughs> That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Right? That's How different good. would the world be if there was a humility month, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Instead we get a pride, we get a pride month. But you know, and I know that it's the outlier things in terms of quantity father as we were talking about earlier but qualitatively there have been these clips and things and it's like this movie that we were talking about this documentary coming out what is a woman which is brilliant by the way brilliant documentary um matt walsh also this uh you know the videos and like clips of these kids being taken to drag shows that are like appearing online like here's kids at drag shows and like the in gay bars and drag queens are like dancing in front of them and all of this and of course they go viral what's been interesting to me less about that because with the background that i have i'm that none of that is shocking to me right so like and maybe that's a bad thing maybe it should be more shocking to me but it's not shocking to me right like i come from vegas i was in like you know the the seedier side of things but um what's really been interesting to me is the reaction in the other direction right because it's like people are like straight to the gulag throw them in wood chippers you know this and this this and this and it's um pride month oh yeah oh interesting (laughs) it's at the heart of it (laughs) (laughs) father just put something very interesting in the chat (laughs) he emphasized the demon within demon in pride month pride month you can't spell pride month without demon can't spell pride month without demon that's that very very that, interesting that should be that should be if we do if we do merch i don't know that's that it. might be a little that might <laughs> be a little, a little too, provocative. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty provocative so given but given that i think it's if i i know that if i didn't have orthodoxy right now if i didn't have christ that even i would be swinging way to the right mm-hmm. and so i think you know, but just the notion that the demons, the demons that, you know, the demon in Pride Month would be just as happy for people to fall to the right because of all of this, because of the, of getting triggered and fall to the right in this whole situation, as they are happy about the kids being dragged to the, the demons, that is, being happy about the kids being dragged to, to the dra- drag to the drag show. Drag to the drag mm. show. I drag, forget. Drag to the drag show. I, I mean, forget. they hate them, right? Mm-hmm. They hate so them. that so so that's I'll 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 let I'll 
good. Let let us go from there. Yeah. So really quick, I just, I don't remember if it was Father. Please correct me on this quote. I want to say it's Saint Paisios said, "If I didn't believe in God yeah, yeah. and His judgment, I would go insane." Yeah. Like, the, the quote is, "If I didn't know that God was going to have the last say, that's what it is." I that's would, and I saw everything and the happening in the world. I, I would you know lose my mind basically. Yeah. Saint Paisios. I think that's an excellent buffer for me to keep me on, on, on the quote unquote royal path. And then I'm going to jump in here and say one last thing. I think we are going to do a second, second episode on ecumenism because I think that there was enough material that we still could have gone, but I do think that this is a very good topic for us to talk about. So maybe next week we'll do a second part on ecumenism, but I just wanted to throw that in there because I think everybody was asking and I felt it was a good idea. So unless we have a discussion off air in which that doesn't happen, but you guys will find out in a week or so. So it all might tie in because I mean, that's part of, I think one of the things in regards of the, the hard swing to the right. Um, what's, what's interesting is that you, you have, um, really not so much i mean I, I i don't know you know i'm not really keyed in um in regards of talking heads whatever but i i don't i don't get the sense of any kind of overt religious figure or community really leading the charge right now that's what's interesting to me is that it, it's kind of like costco mom and dad society that's getting if that makes sense and, and that's what's fascinating to me is that the church you know churches i want to say the church churches and religious figures it seems like it's way easier to find people from religious context being on the on the left of it right now and, and, and I think what, what I want to point to that is the fear, the fear of, of religious folks and churches of not speaking out, you know, getting their card pulled, like all that stuff. And that to me is very dangerous because the, the fear of leaders and, and really like what that speaks to is the disingenuousness and the hypocrisy that everyone's already mad at anyways. I mean, if, if the absurdity and the vileness of all of the trans, trans lobby shenanigans, if, if that's the... And we're just banned from YouTube. <laughs> sorry isn't that, <laughs> isn't that wild <laughs> yeah <laughs> they just sent me an email we're banned they're listening right now and they heard that and we're banned so if 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 that if that's like if that's the powder whatever the the response to that's the spark to blow everything if, if you understand what i'm saying like the people seeing finally like like there is no like, like there is no foundation there's no um there's no fulcrum of truth like you you are not you are not it you're just here to take our money and give us bad multimedia videos and sing songs like moms and dads going to costco waking up to that that kind of like the fear of the religious leaders of like not you know like losing the relevance that's a spark that gets people so mad <laughs> that like because because then it's like well this whole thing is who because the only thing that keeps people from just not being like i'm just gonna murder like all the degenerates and they disgust me is is some sense of kind of like religious conviction and context i don't know if what i'm making i don't know if i'm being i'm definitely not being succinct here but what i'm trying to say is the absence of any strong quote-unquote religious leadership in a, in a American Christian context because of the fear of losing money, of losing influence on the leadership side, the response to that as people oh. begin to wake up is what I'm trying to say. I got you. That's going to be the thing that's going to really catapult people into like, Makes oh, sense. hell no. You know, hell no, like, like, and violence and all that stuff. Do, yeah. do you see what I'm saying? Because 
that kind of like that governor of just like, well, we're not those people, blah, 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 because, you know, we're churchgoers and that. But once they go like, this has all been baloney anyways, because Pastor Jim Bob, you know, he cares more about whatever if you guys are following what i'm saying like yeah so it's like the tolerance is breeding forgive me father it's like the tolerance is breeding dis like it it will breed disenchantment and cynicism with the church and then at that point yeah all gloves are off all gloves are off and it, it's another way of saying it forgive me everyone everyone knows i'm not so saying another way of, of saying it is the the fear and the dis and the disingenuousness and all those things it that's like pulling back the rubber band if that makes sense mm -hmm. and then find like get a nice good strong tension and then as things begin to break and, they, and like the letting go the snapping back the snapping back are like again costco mom and dad's being like and and, and understandably don't get, don't mishear what i'm saying like oh i get it i i i'm you know i get it like basically you've let us down and like all this is who you is you know we're gonna take we're gonna take matters in our own hand because you know no one's doing anything. You know what I mean? That's 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 a big setup. You know what I mean? Well, there was an interesting there was uh, an interesting reaction that I saw, and it was interesting because it particularly notable because you know in the social media circles that I travel in, there's some you know people who were and maybe still are like kind of politically involved libertarians because I ran in that circle and there were several libertarians like politically involved people even involved with the libertarian party but this seemed to be a common sentiment and it was related to that uh, drag show uh, you know the clip of the kids at the drag show and they said the sentiment was something like I, I mean I'll paraphrase one of the kind of responses they said well you know you think it's bad that these kids would be indoctrinated into this, you know, drag thing or whatever. I think that's bad too. But I also think it would be bad that they would be like taught about Sodom and Gomorrah Sunday at church. And, you know, then, and so I wouldn't raise my kids with either one. And it's just like, it, I think it goes to your point, father, is that it's like, here's somebody who's actually reacting against both of these, like these things aren't even to that person. They're not a counterweight against each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. Like to, to this person, they're on, and, and then I'm like, well, what is your, what are you, what is your foundation on? And it's like, no, it's not on anything. It's just the stretching of the right. rubber band. And it's so, just and, a reaction. So that, I think that's really important to almost talk about at length is because the royal path is not about being mushy middle. It, it's not about being like, I just want to like play both sides. I don't, it's not about Switzerland. That's nothing to do with it. Right, because that—that's the thing is, you, it, it, the real path is the harder path, because every you're you're going to be at odds with everybody at that point. Yeah, that yeah. that's what people need to understand. Like, it's the harder path. It's the narrow path, right? Because it's not about not picking a side. It's actually about picking the only real. The, it's about picking truth. Like that. That's the key. It's about taking the side of truth and recognizing that the extremes of left and right, there's always an extreme and there's always going to be a truth to it. And so the royal path is about finding that truth. And that's, that is the hard thing to do. And, I, and, I, and we are all of the conviction, which is why we started this project, that that's fundamentally what we as Orthodox Christians are called to do, is to take that royal path because that's what our master taught us. And we've all seen people taking the lazy, easy road of going in the religious context, going far right. Cause that's, it's lazy and it's easy, but it's yeah. not, it's not correct. And it's not what the Lord did. Right. And we all saw, we, and, you know, again, like Andrew has been wont to say often, especially recently, rightfully so it's like, it gets, you know, don't want to just kind of always be picking on the wokes, but it's like, there's, they're so easy. To, it's so obvious, you know, in some regards, they're so easy to pick on because the absurdity of everything and and here's the thing too like just so people you know just so we don't get it twisted the aggression yeah like, like let's let us let us never think that there isn't real aggression and and 
tendencies, proclivities, and potential terrorists of terrorism from the left, from these lobbies. Absolutely. Like, oh, they're definitely absolutely on a micro scale. My mother in law, God, God love her. I, I truly like this woman is a soft hearted woman. Went to a family reunion and there's somebody who's transitioning, blah, blah, blah. And she called him a he and that thing identifies as a she. And like, uh, then, oh, and you best believe there's going to be an angry Facebook post tonight about talking about the injustices and like the, all the people surrounding this person talking about, oh, this hurt that was done to you. And, you know, oh, like this, this macro aggression, this, like this, you know, uncivilized boomer show to you mistaking your pronouns. How dare they? And like, yeah. And that's, um, of course I can't remember his name. Father he's from California. Um, father John, uh, you know him. He's in the end of that video of the Georgian priests and the LGBT. Um, Father Josiah. Yes, Father Josiah. Mm-hmm. Who I don't know much about this cat, but he was the guy that said very much like, "No, it is very clear to me who the aggressor is here. The aggressor is the left. The aggressor is you will absolutely follow our ways, or you will be not necessarily attacked, but you will be shamed. Well, attacked verbally, and you know maybe even like get some stuff thrown at you." But like, he's like, that is far more the aggressive side. And I don't know that that's true, you know, to the extent of putting a stamp on it. But I would say that, like, I have certainly felt more hostility having the views that I have towards things and how it is much more yeah. likely for me to get booed out of a room. Yeah, than- I mean, I mean, to be frank, I'll put the stamp on it. <laughs> it is, they are, they are more aggressive, but also too, the getting back to the rubber band effect um they're more aggressive and there's obviously potential for all that stuff but at the end of the day the pulling back of the rubber band when it snaps back the ones that snap back they're the ones who you know <laughs> who 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 does you know which side um has caches of weapons and, and, and you know does you know what i'm saying it's it's like which I, i'm all for it don't get me wrong i'm just saying that like uh the fact of the matter is is like it, it's almost as if um i'm sure we've all seen this somehow in the movie the archetype is like rolling in the back of my head but like you know the kind of obnoxious you know antagonist is poking 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 and then finally you can imagine like the protagonist or, well, I hate to put this, but the person being antagonized just snaps back and and, like just chops the head off of like the person poking in the chest, you know what I mean? So it's like, this, this this is, this is the problem is that the response can now then lead the person responding in an even darker place, if that, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Well, and then there's a feedback loop because then it's, okay, this person was poked, 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 but then they did something. And so now it's almost like a, it's almost like it it is not almost like it's the, yeah, it's the weaponization of victimhood. Yeah, That's what it is. Yeah, It's like, we're going to poke, 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 poke. Okay. Now you're going to do something. And now we're going to be like, we're such great victims. And the bigger bully now you come and defend us against it. And it's just like the cycle of violence. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's playing out on a global scale. It's everywhere. Yeah. This is, a, this is a spirit. It's a spirit, right? Amen. This, is, this is, this is Ukraine. Yes. Right? Cause Amen. this is like, for those of you who don't know, I'll just make it real simple for you. Ukraine and, you know, has been poke, 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 you know, the West poke, 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 and uh, send me emails if you want, I don't care. I'm just telling you like, this is what's happened. H- however you want to interpret the poking, doesn't matter. The fact is there's been poking and then the bigger bully or however you want to look at it, which is Russia has gone like, you know what, enough. And like, yeah. starts clearing house. And everyone's like, oh my gosh. Like there's this one person who needs, you know, uh there's this one rogue nun running around the interwebs uh and uh mercy yeah lord have mercy and uh just uh every time she just opens her mouth i just i get nauseous and i get cringy just all the things happening and it's just all this stuff you know and it's just kind of like 
the delusion <laughs> that people have is just like okay like i i get it I, i'm i'm not sitting here and being like yeah like i'm not i'm not some sort of warmonger but this whole thing of getting back to this this documentary like what is like like truth you know the truth is this phenomena of of the poking and then you've incited the violence and now you can scream this person's doing it i mean man we we could really go somewhere with this because you see this in so many aspects of society where um i just it's like that part in monty python in the search for the holy grail where that guy is like see the violence inherent in the system see the violence inherent he's like sitting there screaming at king arthur and he's just like well i didn't vote for you he's like you don't vote for a king and he's like well moist tarts flinging swords about is no like you know there's no system of government and then he finally just like, shut up, shut up. And the guy's like, see the violence inherited in the system? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It, there's not perfect. It's not one for one, but I can see some similarities. Like, yeah. that's like the well, most- the, the drag the, the drag the kids to the drag show. I mean, that's a poke. There's no reason to do that, except that you want it filmed, shown. To, and, and, you know, the particular thing about this video was that, it's a drag show. It's in a gay club or whatever. And I think the important part, it's even the way that the video that is shot is framed. Is it like, here's the kids, here's the drag performer. And behind them is a neon sign that says it isn't going to lick itself. Ugh. Right. So it's in, it's Ugh. that it takes it that extra level, right? It's the extra level. And it's, and it's just like, that's a poke. There's no reason to, to bring a child to such an event, except for the fact that you want to film this thing to antagonize just other people. Mm -hmm. The same thing with that, that men's choir who sang that song that also went viral that was like, we'll convert your children. Yeah, I remember. Right? Remember that? Which and it's like, there's no reason to sing this except to poke. Or jab. There's no reason to do this. Or, or jab. jab. Am or I jab. Right? Am I jab? Yes, exactly. Jab. Jab. Well, yeah. I just want to say this too, because just because just, just for people to understand, I mean, the other side of it too, because it's both and, is that there is orchestrated strategy for sure, but there is just lecherous evil that is just spilling out too. You know what I mean? And that's that's also too i just i want everyone to understand it's like this is tough because when we're talking about the real path this context i'm not like <laughs> the one side is obviously i sympathize and i i, I understand it you know I, i'm just saying it's like it it's really difficult but um when when we understand that the demons hate these people just as much as anybody else. And they, and they're, they're cannon fodder. And the thing is, is like turning just wanton, you know, carnage, not just on a physical, but spiritually or like a spiritual carnage, that's what they're after. And so, you know, if you can, if you, if they can facilitate it, they will. And, and it's, this is tough because it's like, hey, I got more kids than anybody. So I get it, you know, like you start messing around with kids like this, this is the thing that gets people going. And rightfully so, again, don't, don't misunderstand me, rightfully so, but I, I'm just saying we also have to, and that's kind of like our job here. That's what our mission is, our, our, our intention is to like see the traps where they lay on both sides though. And, and, it, and it is, and it is a trap because um, getting back into, you know, the creed when we talked about Kiliasm, it's like, there isn't going to be some, we, you, you may have a, a blip on some sort of kind of like morally sound country or state or something for, for a period of time, but it's just going to be a blip because, because the, the kingdom is not of this world. And 
and the fact that like you can it can cost you the kingdom trying to preserve the earthly kingdom if that makes sense that that's the people that's the te- that's the temptation that you know really obviously our audience and us and, and we all have to realize who who would find ourselves easily on the right side of this is that that temptation that poke is what could cost you the kingdom mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that and that's that's the tough part about this you know what i mean that's that the mean? Tough part about this because you just remember this vengeance is mine thus saith the lord because let me let me flesh some of this out for people we're not talking about actively defending and 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 protecting the the oppressed which, or the defend or the orphan like children that's not what we're talking about we're not talking about like some sick thing comes and tries to like take a child like no 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 you stop them <laughs> you, you stop them right that's not what we're talking about we're talking about larger social movements that that's how spirits operate mm-hmm. just so everyone's clear what we're talking about right on yes. the local level if you're a man you take care of your women and your children if you don't you're you're worse than an infidel to me to me right hey i would agree but what we're talking about is is, is something on the macro right and so the thing is is like vengeance is mine they'll say the lord and there's a difference between stopping something from happening and extracting vengeance or exterminating because you're disgusted which is what the nazis did right and that's that's what we're talking about in regards of all this stuff with left and the right and, and it's super tough because for a lot of people they're a lot of people probably right now they're like scratching your heads like i don't understand and it, it may sound like we're like i'm defending something and i'm not at all but and that's where it is real work to kind of like find the narrow path on this you know what i mean but you just it's it's your little portion on your dad was great andrew because it, it's really the thing is like we have to really not take any narrative and we and we do that by knowing the gospel by knowing the traditions by knowing you know having the spirit within us and with us and doing all you can to abide in the spirit because that's like you know blessed sarah from rose said he said you know the the temptations of the last days of the believers last days are going to be worse than any of them because it's going to be psychological in nature it's just going to be crazy and we see it we see it you know i mean there's the the it's just very clear to me watching this happen that there is no way to know the pendulum's going to swing somebody had somebody had said to me they had, they had said this to me in a, a, a responding to a tweet of mine they were like we're so far left at this point that we could really stand to go pretty far right before it would be to the right and i was like no way to know without christ Mm -hmm. no way to know because the logical progression it's just people are people and the logical progression is not oh i have to oh this there's i see a video of somebody who took a child to a drag show at a, a particular gay club somewhere it's not we got it we need to go and find that parent and you know right. intervene with that parent it's not we've got to go to that club and see how they were able to have a child in there it's not we've got to you know question the situation of these performers and all of this it's like all all people who agree it very quickly gets to all people who who don't want uh all of those people to be wiped off the earth need to be eliminated themselves Like, first, we need to just drop an atomic bomb and just blow up everybody who was there, rescue the kids from out of there. And then anybody who thinks that what we did was wrong, we need to blow them up, too. It's just like human beings very, very, very quickly get to that if they're not grounded in something spiritual. And the only thing that is that is going to ground us in this situation is Christ, period. It's Christ. It's Christ. It's Christ. And and I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to go one step further. um, And and like the true Christ as revealed in the life of the church, because there's plenty of people's like, nah, I got Jesus. And it's like, yeah, but like, nah, (laughs) you know what I mean? Because this whole, this whole concept of being, of of trying to approach this passion of trying to really see something um, above, above the thing and not be motivated by emotions. Like that's the trick is like, 
it doesn't matter. Your emotions, even if they're well-intended, they're, they can still and are obviously used to manipulate you. And so that's one of the things of orthodoxy is, is learning to move past those things, you know? I can't remember who, but St. Silouan, I think someone approached St. Silouan about they're like the Chinese, they're unconvertible. Like you cannot convert the Chinese. It's like, well, what do you do? It was like a missionary. He's like, well, I go to their services and in the middle of their service and they're quiet. I stand up and start yelling about how this is wrong. This is demonic, you know, and I can't remember. It was it was so gentle. I remember Father uh, St. Silouan's response to him. He's like, yeah. And does that work? Like kind of like kind of that kind of thing of being like, not you idiot. Well, no wonder this doesn't work. You're you're making them feel bad. And it's like, no, that's he's like, talk with someone afterwards and say oh this thing this concept you have is so beautiful it just needs this little piece of salt mm -hmm. to bring it to to bring it to fruition like you have well, the beautiful little truth well to i mean to to what your point to kind of what to cyprian's point about no one stopped and said how did they get the kid in the club and like you know what i mean because the thing is is it, they're just wanting to scratch the itch of their emotions of their outrage and that's the problem like, are you really wanting to fix the situation or are you just outraged? You just want to address your outrage. See, that's the difference, right? And, and again, for me, I think that's why the Royal Path is, is needs to be strived for because the Royal Path is about understanding truth. And, and it's only in the light of truth, which is Christ, that you can actually begin to address something. Because Christ does, here's the other thing, Christ does call us to address things. I mean, it's, it's all over the scriptures, right? Like it's, you know, in some portions, scriptures will tell us it's better to um seek justice than righteousness you know what i mean like it's there's all of these things that the scriptures are, there's this play of back and forth and it and it's how do you reconcile it well you reconcile it in christ because in christ you know there there's going to be that moment where it's like okay well who judges you right go and sin no more just like we talked last week right there's Christ wants to solve the situation. He wants to heal, to correct, and to put things right. That's what he does, right? And, and if we are his body and his people, that's what we need to do too, and not just deal with our outrage, you know? Because, because I think outrage is a perfectly acceptable substitute for like, like the peace of the church. Like, faith. I, outrage I, is a substitute for faith. Well, it's oh, a, yeah, it's also a absolutely. substitute for work. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mm -hmm. guess that you can't separate faith from work, mm -hmm. right? I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. I mean, some the manifestation, the manifestation of faith is has to, it's work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's outrage is like, it's, it's really, it's the easiest, it's the easiest path. Mm -hmm. It's the easiest path. I mean, what happens to you, the thing is, is you are subjected to outrage. Like outrage isn't calculated. If it's calculated, it's not real outrage. It's something else. You know, it's it's subterfuge. You know, it, it's 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 drama. Real outrage happens to you if you if you get what I'm saying. And it's like at that point, what do you do? What do you do with it? And most people are just led and carried away by it, which is again very problematic. And it's well, it's, it's intoxicating. Mm -hmm. Outrage is absolutely intoxicating and like when i've been in that mode where like i was outraged and i wanted to be outraged the most interesting thing about that experience and i think most people have had this experience you just you dive in to find more of whatever it is that outraged you yeah you go it's, looking for you go looking for that. it i mean that's why fox more news outraged. fox news forgive me i mean just fox news is is all about outrage generation yeah like, or, or excuse me, out, like generating outrage, like cranking it out. Like that's that's why it exists. You know what I mean? And so this is, you know, again, what are, what, what are we feeding, right? What are we feeding? Because like I get it. There's, there, there's a place for anger, right? But ang be angry and do not sin as the scripture says, right? So there's, hmm. yeah. Because it's, because it immediately drives a, it immediately drives a wedge. It immediately, well, the first thing that it does is it, it, 
dehumanizes and you have to in order to be outraged you have to dehumanize and other right it has to become us and them because there can't be any love because how could you feel true outrage for someone that you love right like i can get upset at my daughters i can get upset at my wife but the idea that i would have real true like rage Mm -hmm. right at them is asinine to me right right like they could like it's asinine to even to the point where they could and i imagine that my daughters will at some point in their lives do something that will really really hurt me right like emotionally that will really really hurt me but yet the idea like i couldn't imagine that i would feel anything except sorrow Mm -hmm. right at most Mm -hmm. right frustration sorrow sadness but not outrage Mm -hmm. because i feel like i could only feel that against somebody that i didn't love Mm -hmm. it would have to be absent of love right and well i think yeah forgive me the the thing about this too to understand which is i think difficult for a lot of us to grasp but i think we have to at least look at it is um you know when we're talking about the the kind of the extremes of all of this um and you're dealing with children and the sexualization of children because that's a thing right like again certain responses are natural and to some degree appropriate but like we are called to be above that. If you understand what I'm saying. And that's one thing that, I mean, maybe it, I have to step back and think, maybe I just have a, a, a too high of an exalted view of Christ. And <laughs> when it means to be orthodox, I don't know. But it's just like, we're called to not just be given over to natural dispositions and affectation. Like, no, we're not supposed like, to be reactionary. You know, and, and, and what I'm getting at is this, it's like, there's two things like with this man that documentary is so good that like what is a woman so good but there's there's two things in there that just like and and i've kind of been keyed into this a little bit um because i I remember i didn't talk much about it but like i just i need to go there real quick forgive me for the digression but like catlin jenner and all that stuff please do father huh please do please do um like, and, and, and I can't remember, I, I read this argument somewhere and it, it, you know, I'm gonna pull a Marlon Brando, but it, it struck me like a diamond, like right, like right in the, right there. And it was like, what an, what an absolute hurt. Like, this is, this is truly what's at play here in regards of an attack on women. You, you remember in Kill Bill when, Bill's talking about Clark Kent is actually the critique of, of like Superman's critique of, of, of human beings, what he really thinks of us, right? Yes. And it's like Caitlyn Jenner or Catelyn Jenner, whatever its name is, like that, like it just dawned on me because I was like, man, this is just as much, an, this is really like an attack on women. Like, and, and like, it's crazy to me, right? Because even subsequently, I've seen things like, oh, like, like this, like, suggestion of calling them, calling women like birth givers and stuff yeah. like, just, you know what I mean? And just birthing people, father. birthing people, like, like reducing women down to these things. Like, and, and, and so, so that's the first thing is like, um, which is so ironic, because, you know, there's been a handful of misguided people who think I have a thing with women I love women that's that's one of the things that has just got me so insist about this is that I love my daughters I love my wife I love my spiritual daughters like I value their femininity you know you know what I mean I value them as women I love the mother of God femininity is something so unique and wonderful and all this stuff is absolutely it's if we can almost see femininity as a blessing and a gift from god it's blasphemous in the way that it, it's trying to twist it and i would say this because there's there's one other part i want to get to i just want to say this one of the things that you learn and i don't know you're not going to really read this anywhere this is just from experience but um i'm sure if there was other priests hearing this they would agree with me you you learn something very quickly you learn that 
the demons have a particular hatred for women. There's a, there's a very particular hatred towards women that the demonic has. And so for me, so much of this transgender stuff is really an attack on, on femininity, womanhood, and really the mother of God. And really like, that's something that's really key to understand here, right? The other thing is I want to say real quick, we're, I hope you don't, don't lose it. I just want to say this real quick is that um, the idea of despair and the way these are, these are all little despair bombs. Every little transgender thing, person, whatever, is a, is a despair bomb. Like in the sense that they're, they're sent out and then the response by believers, by the church, it's like, it's a real trap. Because I think the only real response for us to have is a call to repentance. And to be like, because because that's where, that's where I want to be at. I want to like, you know, I, I'm I am now wanting to draw a line in the sand. I'm I'm wanting to just kind of like get out there and be like, you know, I'm gonna make my stand and just like go to war a little bit and be like, I'm all for defending women, right? Like, I don't want any of my spiritual daughters. I don't want my my biological daughters. I don't want my wife. Even even having to worry about something as stupid and ridiculous as you know not only can they go to the bathroom and be safe but like to have who they are and what they are being questioned right so that that's the first thing but the second thing is really being able to say these people and there's more of them than, than they want to acknowledge than the than the world and the devils want to acknowledge especially now especially now these people who are like yes you've you've absolutely have destroyed your life but as long as there's breath, if you turn to Christ in repentance, there's hope for you. That, that, that's what I want to say to, to the world and be like, nope, nope. It's just like, like if, if you've made this mistake and, and you genuinely are sorry, you genuinely want to find repentance and redemption, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through hell with you back because that's what Christ calls us to do. And I know Christ is willing to do that for people, but only if you truly want repentance. Can we dig into this in the Orthodox context though? Because I think that there's probably a lot of people who would interpret what you're saying, because w while we've talked about repentance, I feel like we can never talk about it enough mm -hmm. um, and like clarify it enough, because I think that there's a lot of people that would hear you say that and would think that you are the same as like, uh, you know, Mike Pence and his, pray the gay away uh camps and things like that that that's what, what the, that, that's what you're that? talking about you know where what they have the, the 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 conversion you know the, the these evangelicals they have these conversion camps they can they like, send the they send the gay kids to uh -huh. and the, or the or the or trans or whatever and they send them and it's like pray the gay away okay. right it's like their their thing but it's in it's in this evangelical fire and brimstone yeah, 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 you're yeah. going to hell and yeah. it's like as opposed to, I think, so this is why I wanted to talk about the, <laughs> right? <laughs> Break the game. Because, can I you add, know, go ahead, go ahead. Can I add something really quick to this whole, like, it's an anti-woman movement? Is Dave Chappelle was talking about um, the year that, I don't know her name, Caitlyn Jenner or whoever got, that officially became a woman, quote unquote. She got woman of the year. Oh, yeah. And then Dave Chappelle was like, yeah, beat out right. every, he said, he didn't say this exactly, but I, I'm going to say he beat out every other woman, every yeah. other woman. He beat that, he beat them out. And it was just like, I don't agree with everything that guy says, but when he nails it, he nails it. And he's like, he's one of those dudes that has not backed down, you know, about, you know, some of that stuff. And just the, the, the polarity of him suggesting like, I mean, even heck, even J.K. Rowling, like J.K. Rowling, just admitting, yep. just like saying, like, I'm a feminist, blah, blah, blah. I'm on board with everything. Abortion. It's all cool with me. That's all fine. But listen, it's not the same thing. Then suddenly she is ostracized. She's suddenly that. And I'm sure there's other stuff, too. They but call like, them trans exclusionary radical the feminists. Turf. They call them TERFs. Yeah. Turfs. So um, that. Which man what a 
what what a what a, talk about something being co-opted you know and like i'm not even like whatever whatever i'm gonna put my foot in my mouth but i can imagine say- a, imagine someone genetically born a man has more, genetically born male okay i'll say that imagine someone genetically born male having a greater say of what it means to be a feminist than jk rowling that person being allowed to exclude a woman <laughs> from, from feminism <laughs> because it's, it's absurd. Sir, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. And like, I mean, and that was one of the problems is when I started to wake up to some of the stuff and I was never really on board with the trans thing. That for me, I, I through God's grace, I kind of knew like, okay, yeah, this is too far. Like it's too far. Um, and I was never really on board with the gay thing either. I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, that's between them and God type of thing. A, l- a l- very lukewarm stance on everything. But I can say that, like, when I really started to wake up and started to be like, wait, let's really sit back and, like, on a chalkboard, write, like, what we believe. And let's sit back and, like, as a society, what it looks like. And it's just like, I think if we actually did in a sober mind, like, I think we would just be like, what has happened? Like, what is happening? But happened? we can't. But we well, can't. No, we're I think that's, that. that's, that's, that's the point of that what is a woman documentary. Like, that's exactly the point that is being made in that documentary. Is that like, we literally can't at this point because you can't even, like, we can't write down what we believe because you can't even ask the question, what is a woman? Like yeah. at this point, you can't even ask that question. Did we lose father? Or is no. he just being super no. stoic? Oh, man, you are like a statue. <laughs> father, <laughs> you're just so stoic. Yeah. I want to I talk about what, because can we talk about like, so, okay, so in this context, what does repentance, maybe we should just have a little refresher on repentance, the concept of repentance, but specifically like in this context, mm-hmm. What does repentance look like? Uh, obviously, it's going to be different for everybody. But mm-hmm. I mean, with this particular context, how does this process start? And what does repentance look like in this context? Sure. So a uh, working definition of repentance is the cessation of a sin or a vice or a, some sort of damaging um, way of way of living a way of existing the cessation of that and and then the turning towards virtue that's that's repentance if you if you're lacking that latter part you're not repenting how do we understand the sin in the case of like the the trans thing i mean it can't just be dressing like a woman right like no. it's got to, it's gets something deeper than that like how well, do we thing, how do we understand what's sure. happening well the thing is again let's get back into sin and understanding from a patristic perspective a sin um and an orthodox perspective which is it isn't exclusively just simply a, a you know moral failing right it, it's 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 again says so before it's it's easier and more accurate to understand it in the context of disease That gets problematic for some people because of the way this language has been twisted by mental health people and some of the more um, uh, ineffectual um, aspects of 12-step culture. But but to understand, the flaws understand it as as disease and and that doesn't exclude moral choice at all, but it's, it's deeper than morality, right? Um, and so understanding that what we're talking about fundamentally is this, is, is a disorder, right? And it's, it's an, it's a disorder. Um, let me give you an example. What is cancer? Well, cancer is the hyper growth of cells essentially, right? Cells are meant to grow, right? But there's, there's a disorder there and that disorder is causing now destruction to the to the person right it's like a literal forgive me father it's like a literal di- when you say disorder you mean it like literally there's there's an order and now it's out of order like yes. it's disorder yes. yeah it's not like a messy room <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right 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 like there there's there is a way that something's meant to function designed to function and it doesn't cease to function it actually 
is is in many ways hyper functioning. Hyper functioning is, is many times like the, the root of a passion, right? So again, real quick catechism, all passions are sins, but not all sins are passions. This is key to understand, right? When we're talking about this, we have to, we're talking about people's passions, not their sins necessarily, right? Um, real quick, Cyprian doesn't steal. He stole a granola bar just because he doesn't know what came over him. He sinned. Okay, that's great. But it's not a passion. You know what I mean? His passion is eating too much, right? It's something that he chronically does and he does it to the detriment of his life, those around him, and it severs primarily his relationship with God, right? Because the eating is, a, is an idol. There's a, hype, there's a hyper movement in that, right? So generally a passion is a hyper movement towards something, right? It's idolatrous in nature, right? Yeah, the, the idol idolatrous, forgive me, Father. So it's, I'm, just, I'm just trying to like, yeah. just, because uh, these, are, these are important and these were hard yeah. for me to get. So I'm not, I'm not trying to interrupt, but I know that there's no, people good, who please. are like- well, Everyone knows I'm not succinct, so go ahead. Yeah. So the, the idolatry thing, so that it always, so when we see, when, when we are confronting a passion, can, can we always see it as something like idolatry? Have we, have we created like a little mini God yeah, in a way? I, yes, I, I think that, yes, that's, that's safe to say. And for, in order for people to grasp this really, um, because remember, it's the totality. But let's get to the root, which is the spiritual. And the spiritual is this idolatrous nature, which fundamentally is a turning away from life and from communion and the other, which is God and the focusing on self. And then from there, it plays out into the, psycho into the psyche and then into the body, right? So that's why, you know, people will need to have, they will experience things physiologically, but, it, that, but the cause isn't the physiological disorder. The physiological, the disorder as it's manifested in the physiology, that's the result of the spiritual root. Are you, are you seeing what I'm saying? So, so somebody like, having gender dysphoria, for instance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So, so they're feeling like I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong body and they're having some sort of a physiological response in this way. That's not actually, th that that is the result of something that we actually have to dig deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, you know, disclaimer, um, I am not a licensed psychiatrist, so I don't, you know, I don't dole out meds, right? And I can't give a authoritative, comprehensive outline on how neurochemistry affects behavior, right? But I'll tell you about it, <laughs> right? Uh, and I'll say the same in regards of like being a licensed practicing psychologist. Like I'm not a licensed practicing psychologist, but I'll tell you about it, right? Um, but I am a priest and I am a confessor and I am someone who has confessed and has spiritual children that are homosexual or, or struggle, no it's homosexual, struggle with same-sex attraction. Um, I have spiritual children. I, I have confessed people that have struggled with gender dysphoria. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I'll tell you about that too. And the, but the problem that I saw with one person in particular was um, until me speaking with this person, no one, including previous priests that they had dealt with ever really addressed the issue. Everything was, everything, the, the, the focus was completely on their psychosomatic reality, which is, which is a reality, right? It's, it's, it's a reality, but the thing is, is, you know, sorry, Lady Gaga, they weren't born that way, right? Like, and what I mean by that is there, there, there very well may be some latent um, issues, there may be some, some issues in regards of some kind of neurological problems that can, you know, facilitate a growth in that direction, if you're following what I'm saying. But these, <laughs> the thing that's always missing, just to kind of help people understand this, when you, if you get any type of training on a clinical level about like gender dysphoria, LGBTQ issues, all that stuff, it's always presented in the context of nature and never nurture. And 
that's the part that people always, you know, kind of like getting back to Andrew's dad, people don't have the, the wherewithal to really suss that out and be like, hold on here. Even if I'll grant you there's a, there's a measure, right? There's a, there's a measure, there might be something late in there, or whatever. Is it all that? What's going on in the regards of like the nurture component? What's going on in regards of like, how is how are they being interacted? How is this being facilitated? For instance, there was like a Showtime show. I can't remember what it's called, but it was dealing with this stuff too, with trans people. And it was just wild because all the moms in this, in this show were just like using their kid to get their woke points. It's like, and the thing is, that isn't, that's, and it isn't, as anecdotal as you might think, because I, I've seen it in real time. I've seen it in real time, right? It seems so, to be the norm. It's, it's like the norm. That It's almost like if you see a trans kid, you can pretty much go to the mom and yeah. you're like, there's a problem. Yeah, there's a problem. And then, and then there's, there's also too, like the mimetic aspect of it in regards to social media, stuff like that. Like I, I have a family that's close to me where it's just like the older daughter is all caught up in this and you know she was in a parish where it's just like you know six out of 11 girls are caught up like that doesn't happen it's mimetic right it's it's mimetic and i'm so sorry what does mimetic mean so let, let's put it it's contagious how's that the yeah. idea is contagious yeah the idea is contagious but it's mimetic in regards of imitating miming like to like you know to now follow suit to emulate right can't spell um, mimetic without meme. Well, no, yes, you can. It's M I M. The spiritual truth of what I just said is <laughs> that's true. That is that. Yes, that is. Well, so it, I, I, get back to this. I don't want to lose this. So, okay, go ahead. So like, so okay, so so this thing with getting back to repentance and salvation, redemption, salvation. Right? What does it look like? Well, it's again getting someone to understand. Okay. I'll, I'll start with this, right? Sure. How about this? It's not your fault, but guess what? It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility, right? <laughs> like, um, and I've known too many people who have and are repenting of things to know that like, yeah, like it's true, right? And so what it looks like is someone has their conscience pricked. They allow their conscience to be pricked. And then from there, they're like, what do I do now? Right. And this is that sweet nexus spot of like where despair can begin to happen for someone. Because then it's just like, I've already begun to transition. I've already taking, I've already started taking hormones. I've already started to take hormones, whatever it is. And it's that point where the devil's got people is just like, well, I might as well just go forward or just, you know, take my life, God forbid. Right. But this is where it's like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Right. Like, let's, let's begin repentance. Right. And so. Um, what it looks like is first you have to the cessation of that of that issue, which isn't just like whatever sexual practices you're engaging in, but even in regards of being able to say, I have been wrong. Mm. Like that's that's the first step in repentance. Mm -hmm. And you know, ding ding ding, <laughs> that's the hardest thing for any of us. It doesn't even have to be as crazy as. What we're talking about but it's so difficult for us to say I, I have been wrong well then you're not the victim too correct like amen and correct because the second that you say oh i was wrong you've just said i am not a victim correct let me let me also say this too um because uh I, I, and it's just it's it's from experience right um i have with God's, you know, help, I've been able to be in the life of, you know, some people who I love very much, you know, who struggle with, with some particular issues, some, some common ones. And there's certain disorders that I deal with that um, clinically, it, it, there's, there's one particular disorder I deal with um, where clinically they say it's the hardest, you know, disorder to deal with. Therapists don't know what to do with it, right? And so you probably can't name it, can you? The disorder, not the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the disorder is is borderline personality disorder, 
right? It's it's oh yeah. It's it's the, clin- they say yeah. like, clinically clinicians say it's the hardest one to deal with, right? And it is, right? Um, but I'm going to give everyone the big secret, right? The big secret for people to make progress, and this is the thing I'm trying to I'm trying to say. There is nothing that can't be repented of. If you still have air in your lungs, there's a path of repentance. But the trick is, and the hardest step, and the first step to real change, real repentance is, I'm responsible. Because that victim narrative is what keeps people locked in and what keeps them, what's, what facilitates them getting worse and worse and worse, right? Yeah. Once you get people to start saying like, no, like I, I see my part in this. It, regardless of what was done to you, what was your part in it? Once you once you get people to start seeing that, it's 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 miraculous. Beautiful. It's 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 real repentance. But guess what? Easier said than done. Easier said than done. Because this isn't this isn't even someone mouthing it. Because people can mouth it, but mm-hmm. you know, mouthing it, um, you know, Andrew's an African American. Right. I can mouth that. It doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. getting people to actually experience that, which is repentance, right? Hey, Father, so, you're wrong about that, by the way. <laughs> I don't Did know. You do it? Have you done a 23 in me? I don't know. Don't, don't because they're, they're stored in your DNA. I'm looking at your hair. I know you're from Missouri. I know all kinds of stuff that was going on in Missouri. <laughs> my granddaddy's from, my great grands from Missouri. I don't know, Andrew. You might be. The same. You know, my, I think it, I wash out. Like I wash out like the rest of my skin with like how white I am. I'm like, <laughs> I'm of German lineage. Order now, like, the, real, the real Missourians coming out of you now. Okay, yeah, so there you go. So, father, father, this that you're saying about it's so incredibly powerful. I mean, I was in a relationship with a woman who like diagnosed borderline personality disorder mm-hmm. in like talk about talk about the being in the presence of demons like that was just like it's serious but you even saying that something just in me resonated that like because it's oh yeah that's what that yeah that her her actually making a decision and and i know she didn't like i truly know if she didn't want to be that way but Mm -hmm. there was no like path for her Mm -hmm. but but the path that is like saying what's happening to really say it not like to just say it as a way of getting by not to say it as a way of like assuaging some conflict but to for her to really inside herself be like i'm responsible even for the smallest thing i'm Mm -hmm. responsible for this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like i'm really responsible Mm -hmm. but i also know something intuitively like playing that out in my mind it would be a moment of absolute earth shattering yes but but also at the same time like a complete destruction of herself in a way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? She'd be and free that's... from the shackles, but she would also be complete. She'd be destroyed right. for a while. And and this is and this is the thing. It's like, what? Well, what's left of me? Well, yes, what's left yes, of me? yes, yes. And that's yes. the problem with people with with alphabet soup and 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 trannies and all that stuff. Is like, what's what's left? What's left of me? But see that. See this is. I I know this is gonna blow everybody away. Forgive me, but I'm just gonna say it. That's why it's the cross. <laughs> because right. what's left of you is is like that's the cross. It's like, hold on, I have to die. Yeah. Yes. That's that's exactly what this is. And so, wow. Yeah, you know, and like this is where you know, whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. You know what I mean? The Lord says, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." right? Like it's, it's death, like showing someone you have to die, but then them dying is two separate things. Right. So, but, but this is the key and this is what repentance looks like. And then from there, then from there, there is a path of repentance, which can be so, which not can be is rewarding is incredibly rewarding because then now you not only are in communion with God, but you're now in, in right communion with your fellow man. That's the cross, the vertical and the horizontal, right? Because now your repentance, you want to you have purpose in your life. You want to have a mission. 
you repent of some grievous, some 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 grievous things. I mean, you you know what to do with your life right then and there. You don't even gotta think about it. Like you got the fire, you got the motivation, you got the mission. Like there's 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 purpose, right? And so this is this is the thing, and this is this is what I mean by you know, if I had it my way, right, which thank God, right? But like, you know, um, like just hypothetically speaking, no one freak out on me. But like if I was a bishop, right? I would be all over the place being like, I'd be at all these tranny lobby thingies doing whatever, but I would be like, you know, I'd have some spiffy way of doing it, but just like, yeah, God loves you guys. And he, and he wants you to repent of this, this terrible thing that is destroying you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think, I think that's the real, that's the, that's like such an important part is that it's like, it's destroying you. It's destroying and I think that any person who's re who's like looking, it's like, and anyone who's honest, who's been through that, which I thought was another great thing about that documentary, right? Is that it's like, the truth is it's a path of destruction. Mm -hmm. And anyone, I mean, look, I lived in LA. I was in nightlife. I was in, you know, I was in the industry that I was in. It's like, I know a lot of people with all, and have known a lot of people over all the years with all kinds of perversions, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, there's not a single one of them that I could look at and be like, you know what, you're doing okay. Yeah. Like you're, you know what, you know what, you're good. This is good for you. There's mm -hmm. not a single one of them. Every single one. It's like, I look at them and I'm like there, but for the grace of God, go I mm -hmm. like, I, and, 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 that, I and that's everybody does. And that's the key is also too, is the real path in this, the church's response from my perspective, my response, right. Cause I, I deal with this is like, yeah, it, we all got our thing that we got to deal with for sure. This just happens to be a little bit different because it's in the limelight right now. And it's, you know, the hot, it's a hot ticket, you know, all that stuff. But like, at the end of the day, it's like, we all got to repent of these things. And, you know, it's like, hey, you know, if I was that bishop or that priest or whatever, was like in that forum and be like, you know, I got my, I got my plastic Mac over my cassock because, you know, people are going to start throwing stuff at you. you just got to be ready for it. But like, that's, that's just what need, people need to hear. They need to hear. The church, absolutely, Christ absolutely loves you. The church will absolutely accept your repentance, right? And and there's hope for you in your repentance. That's what they need to hear. Because the other portion, I just, I just, I, I get it. And that's there to kind of, I, I, I think the thing for my struggle with is the general response from, from church folk is just, it's more outrage, which I get, you know what I mean? But it's just like, I don't know if there's really a place for it because I don't need to be outraged by it. I don't want my kids being manipulated and programmed and, and all that stuff, you know? And, and, and this is what I mean by that. This is what I mean. I'm not being like soft on it. What I mean by I don't need it is that um, it's like my dad taught me for, when he taught me, you know, how to box, right? First thing my dad taught me, don't get angry. You can't get angry. Once you get angry, you're not boxing anymore. The guy's got you, right? That's what I mean by we don't need the outrage. Not that I'm condoning it. Not that I want to be soft on the Labrador Mafia and all that stuff, whatever. What I'm talking about is that doesn't do anything. All it does is get is get the faithful riled up and gets them too far on the right hand path and they're not thinking. Yes. Right. I'm all about like, okay, yeah, we know that this is what this this is what this 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 how this how things are done, blah blah blah. What are we gonna do about it? You can't actually do anything about it if you're in outrage. You can't box, right? But if if we're dispassionate, we're sober, <laughs> and we're taking the world path of it, that's like we can see the strategy. You can see the strategy because again, you're not dealing with with divine and and all of whatever. You're you're dealing with demons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so it's like we can't hear from God if we're outraged. We 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 can't we can't maneuver through the crowd like the Lord did and disappear and reappear in the right ways if if we aren't listening to Him. And when we're outraged, we don't have our eyes focused on on, on Christ in that sense. You know what I'm saying? I mean so. It's like Emperor Palpatine, 
at the end of Return of Jedi. Hey, guess mm-hmm. what, guys? I made a Star Wars reference. What else is mm-hmm. new? But it's like Emperor Palpatine at the end of Return of Jedi is like goading Luke. He's like, yeah. go get him, get him, get him. And the minute you surrender to your rage, I win. Mm-hmm. Or like Rise of Skywalker. He's like, kill me. Same. Same. Kill me and bow down to your hate and your anger, and I win. You know, I'm getting you to the point where you're so angry. And the minute you let that consume you, I win. Even if it destroys me, quote unquote, like that doesn't matter. I've won. Yep. And, you know, that's like, you know, this Batman and Joker. It's like the minute that like, you know, kind of to a degree. I mean, because Batman did definitely kill Joker in Dark Knight Returns and didn't suffer any real ramifications from it. But like this idea of like, I'm going to bring you to the edge and then I'm going to wait for you to jump over because the minute you jump over i'm you know i won you know so i mean you're just feeding into the the feedback loop that i want you in because the people who end up old and i mean like chronic like age old in anger like that is some of the hardest hearts i've ever seen westboro westboro baptist church man yep generational because it's just a family yeah. It's yeah. just an extended family, Westboro Baptist Church. There's yeah. nobody that's part of that church that isn't that isn't yeah. either that, by marriage or birth part of that family. It's a and, it's just hatred. And that's the end goal. That's the enemy's yeah. end goal. Because if the enemy can if the enemy can get believers in the body to to calcify like that, right? Then mission accomplished, right? Because that's another kind of antichrist. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let, let's just be clear. Any like re- remember the whole thing. Any Christ is the, isn't the five hundred pound crack smoking lesbian, black lesbian, right? That's not Antichrist, right? Antichrist is you know Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that, yeah, like like as, as a Nazi, as a Nazi. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like clean, moral, like mm-hmm. doing the right thing. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's well, that was the Nazi persona. That's how they came to power. Yeah. Right. Is that it was like, we're the clean, moral, yeah. uh, you know, we're all about family. Right. We're all about, you know, and but it's hidden underneath it. Mm-hmm. It's just as sick as the degeneracy and just as degenerate, by the way. Yeah. Like all of those things were like the SS officers were doing all of that stuff right. and all of that. And it's like and the SA guys, they killed some of them for for that stuff. It's like it's still hidden under the the Hugo Boss uniforms. Mm-hmm. Right. And the extreme order was still the, the 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 corruption yeah and lest we forget also one of the biggest opponents of homosexuality and non-masculine behavior is china i'm just saying yeah. like they're just like no i mean that stuff's not going to fly over here i mean they're like we we won't we won't allow that so i mean like that's its own type of evil like that's its own type of like the other extreme and like i mean i don't know just speculation like what if the antichrist were to stand up and be like hey do you see how ridiculous all this stuff is like i can put an end to it like we can well well, that's exactly that's what's coming we'll see i have no idea well the people are the people right now and this is my this is the antichrist is gonna be homosexual oh yeah 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 for sure will be homosexual for sure sure. yeah yeah. that's the tradition teaches yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah sure absolutely must be must be yeah so then that kind of throws my theory kind of out the window no, 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 it, no, it doesn't. No, like it doesn't. A, well, I was thinking more along the lines of like a Jordan Peterson or like a Ben Shapiro that come along and they're like, do you not see how evil this is? Like, I mean, a man and a woman, it's supposed to be a man and a woman and like coming well, but along. That's not going to be the argument. The argument is going to be like, it's going to be like, no, no, no. What's what's wrong is this far extreme, but the homosexuality is fine. Like that's what that's what the argument's gonna be. Is that it's uh, like, yeah, because it's remember the, remember something too. We're so uh, we are so far left that like people like even people on the right are really just center on a lot of this stuff right. because you know you'll talk to like there's been these polls done in churches where it's like people are like yeah I mean whatever I know the church teaches this but like I don't care what people do you know what I mean like that's that's the position of a lot of people so. Position you know, and like, and and to be fair, and to be fair, and Frank, you know, on, on the other end of it, like, because the you factor isn't enough. It isn't enough for you to be like, ew, it's gross, and that's why it's bad. Like, okay, yeah, it's gross, but like, this is my big thing. Is okay. Let's just get into it. Does anybody want to know why it's wrong? 
<laughs> right? Maybe that's something good to cover. Okay. I, mean, I think it would be remiss if we didn't. I'll tell you why it's wrong. Okay. Because homosexuality, right? It is inherently on an ontological level narcissistic. It is an icon of the breaking of communion, right? Uh, it's the same reason why masturbation is, you know, self-abuse, right? The, it does not produce fruit. The only fruit that's produced is from communion. A man and a woman, which represent complementary dichotomies, if you, if that makes sense, right? Like they, the complement of the man and the woman is what makes the totality of humanity, right? That complementing, right? is a symbol of reconciliation. It's a symbol of repentance. It's a symbol of unity, it, like all of those things, right? And it produces fruit, right? It produces fruit. So yes, we find it repugnant and all that stuff, but the reason why we find it repugnant is because it's, it goes against not just like simple, simply nature as St. Paul says in the book of Romans, right? but it goes fundamentally against the design of the logos, right? Which is a revelation of communion. A man and a woman joined together is an icon of communion, right? It's an icon of Christ in the church, right? This is what St. Paul also says in the, in the book of Ephesians. So the reason why we're like, no, is not just because of just antiquated morality and like, we're just, it's always been that way. That argument isn't really good enough actually from my perspective, because yeah. there's been sodomy since, you know, forever too, right? So it being old doesn't mean it's good, but what it is, is, is what it reveals. And so what, what homosexuality reveals is fundamentally hyper-individualism, narcissism, right? Um, sterility in the sense Disor of- what, Disorder. Disorder, right? Mm -hmm. Disorder, right? So- so this is the problem, and no one, but no one's saying this. Right. People just people just say Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Like that type of stuff. It may be funny in the moment, I guess, but like it's not it's not winning anybody, you know, to to the point of like you know, yelling at the Chinese, whatever. It's not so. So my thing is, I don't want to win a culture war. I want to win souls. That's that's mm -hmm. what I'm interested in, mm -hmm. right? I want souls to repent and to be like. I'm, I'm miserable because you are miserable. Yep. Every single transgender person is miserable. Absolutely. Absolute statement. I stand by it. But, come but, on, they, but they will admit it. that just, they will right? admit that that's the reason why they're transitioning. Isn't it right. like, that's the whole, everybody, even who's an advocate of the transitioning is like, would you rather, have, well, it's, it's that, that's the saying. It's like, would you rather have a, a living daughter or a dead, a dead son? son? Yeah. 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 Meaning your son is miserable. Right. And that's why they're going to turn themselves into a woman. Right. Or attempt or, or a, attempt to. Right. Right. But fa father, before you go on, because I think the sterility point, like this is just like nobody talks about this. You're right. And I think this is just so important. But it's like it, it brings me to there was a co-star on the TV show that I was on. Right. And we are all in the most like wicked scenarios you could imagine. Right. Super sexually promiscuous drugs and everything everywhere. You name it. Right. Like whatever the sin were there and we're in sin city and we were icons of that city right so it's like like literally this is like people would go to that city hoping to see us because we were such representations of sin right and it's like one of the notable things one of my co-stars was he he was in his 30s and got a vasectomy no children right participating in all this stuff casual sex everywhere in sex work, whatever, and got a vasectomy, like that I will never have children. Mm -hmm. And it's really just like an absolute, like it's, it's demonic. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. absolute, and it always struck me that way. Mm -hmm. And everybody who heard it, like they immediately had like, all of all the things that he did, of all the terrible, wicked, sinful things, more than anything, if people heard he got a vasectomy, they'd be like, ooh, that's, that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does he have kids? No. Oh, they, they, they just had immediate, like, mm -hmm. visceral reaction. 
they're like, oh, why? Oh, uh, that's that's horrible. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's and I think that there's that when we're able to say that, like, yeah, it's this disorder of sterility, it's the disorder of not bearing fruit like these that this is this is what like this is the deeper principle at play. I think then people can start to wrap their heads around like, oh, this isn't just bigotry no. that we're talking about. No. No, no, I mean that's like a term that's been co-opted to to all mm -hmm. get out because now it's like we've talked about it before, but it's like if I don't agree completely with everything, then I'm a bigot or I'm a racist or I'm a, a you know transphobic or whatever. And it's like you can throw whatever label. Of, the difference is, is I don't define myself by a label. That's the difference. The difference is is you've stamped this thing on yourself, other than the I C X C Nika, which is on my heart you know, that was given to me at baptism. That's the only label that like, I'm really trying to divine myself by. But if someone throws a label at me, I'm like, you can call me that if you want to, that's fine. It doesn't define me. Like the difference is, is to a degree, I kind of know who I am because I know who I am because Christ has told me who I am to a degree, you know, and like that sure footing that that house built on rock rather than sand is the thing that like allows me to like, I look the same for the past like five years for the past five years of my life. I've looked the same. I've needed to not shave my beard or trim my beard in any way or like have a, like do like a radical haircut or like a new like way of like shaping my beard or anything like that. Like, I don't suddenly feel the need to like rock a mustache. Not that any of that stuff is wrong. But what I'm saying is just like, I'm kind of like, I, I am who I am. This is just going to who I'm going to be. You know, I'm just going to have long hair and dreads until I don't. That's until I cut it off. What's that? That's oh, it's freedom. freedom. Totally. That's liber That's liberation. 100%. Because I don't, I, the other day, my wife told me, someone sent me a picture and they weren't smiling. He's like, why are they not smiling? She, oh, that's what Zoomers do. Zoomers don't smile in pictures anymore. So, oh, I had no idea. Like, oh, and oh, what a release that was. I was just like, oh, I don't care. I have no idea what these kids are doing now. And it's like, you know, I, I ironically do sometimes, but it's like, that's really just to get a laugh. And I mean, it, that's that's like the nice thing is I don't have to stay up with every new thing because every new thing is wrong. You know, like we have the thing. The thing is there. The thing was given to us a long time ago. And like every effort of every saint I've ever respected has been to safeguard it and to make sure it does not get corrupted. And that's the only thing I really care about. And I mean, I, I don't pull this card, but it's just like I have a person who is openly at times antagonistic. He's an old queen. And like, you know, that's a whole other point that I don't know, even know if we're gonna have time to get to tonight is I have a couple old queens that hang out at my work. And um, they just cannot stand the new LGBT stuff. They're just like, they don't like the trans stuff. They don't like any of that stuff. They're just like, it's just foul. And it's nothing for what we worked for and all that stuff. Again, not really my opinion. But he's openly kind of like antagonistic towards me sometimes because he knows as an Orthodox Christian and he's like a pretty professing pagan. And then there are times where I'm just like, look, dude, at the end of the day, like, give it like 50 years or so. And like, we'll see who's right. And it's not even about like who's right, because I'm praying for you. That's the difference is like, I'm praying for you, but we'll see how things look. We'll see how things look. And, you know, like you're. The things you're saying now, like, you know, I just have to kind of sit there and say, please forgive him, you know, and, you know, I don't know if that's my place to do that, but it's just like, I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, the thing is, is like, you're still, you're calcified in your anti-Christianity and you're calcified in your narrative that the Christian church is deeply responsible for your unhappiness. Because if you, your suicide attempts that has, hey, by the way, this guy has multiple, multiple, multiple suicide attempts. That has he's nothing miserable. to do with the fact that he's, you know, that he's not, you know, seeking repentance, seeking Christ. That has nothing to do with it, you know, you know, quote unquote, has nothing to do with it. But it's like, dude, I don't I don't know what to tell you. You're calcified in this opinion that the church has done some inherent wrong to you. And sure, maybe they have somebody handled your homosexuality inappropriately. And that's not cool. That's not what I'm going for either. Like, you know, I'm, you know that's not what I'm going for either. But at the same time, like you are so willing to lay everything in a per, uh, way, lay everything at the feet of this person. And there's a person I deeply love 
person very close to me who's recently decided that they're gay and I kind of get what their anger at men blah 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 I get it um you know because it was a personal trauma that happened to her um but now she's saying like oh you know uh I I was gay I don't want to go to church because I was persecuted a lot for being gay when I was a child and I was like I was there when you were a child you were not persecuted for being gay because you were straight like this is not a thing you have decided you are gay now at the ripe old age of 32 years old this is this is this like i mean this is you saying this and and now like you were hanging up pictures of jonathan taylor thomas and hayden christensen and like posters in in your wall it's like the thing is is like what what is always missing is the context right and so the other portion of of this in regard to the repentance is that um it isn't just a kind of blanket here's what repentance looks like for transgenders because we're talking about people. So people have to understand the place in which they have participated in their own destruction. Mm. And, and they have to then be willing to do the work. Um, but we can give them a guarantee that if they do the work, then they will be they will find god's mercy and they will find you know salvation and that's that's what the church does and that's what we're so that's what we need to do and that's why i think tonight's kind of portion is really important because no one's talking i mean maybe someone is whatever but like you know um no one's talking about this and and it needs to be talked about because i'm gonna tell you something right now um this is going to be one of the key issues that's going to you know um, um facilitate the a measure of real um i want to use the word persecution because it's going to like trigger people but this is going to be this is already the, the rumblings have already begun in regards of the church this issue um and it's gonna be it's gonna be the the kind of like you know when there's these people it's just like the lord the pharisees and the scribes were always looking to catch him into something they're they're looking for that thing this is the thing that the world is wanting to is waiting to catch us on and they'll they'll catch us but the long side with that is there's a lot of fruit because to me um there's something juicy and <laughs> forgive me how this sounds but there's something really juicy about snatching a soul like that from the jaws of hell mm. it's, it's super good because it's just like the demons think that they have these people on lock and to be able to yes. really snatch someone from i'm all for it yeah i'm all for it. i'm all for you know what i mean like I'm all for it. I'm all for having a rainbow and being like, nah, nah, it ain't for it ain't for alphabet soup. It's for it's for God's promise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm all about I'm all about really kind of I'm all about taking it on the offensive, to be frank with you, and just like taking back our symbols, right? Um they're not they can't have those symbols. Rainbow doesn't belong to them, belongs to us. The all seeing eye doesn't belong to them, belongs to us, right? Uh, and taking these souls, these people who the demons think that like, it's just a matter of time, you know, like, nope, nope. It's snatching them back to the glory of God. That's what I'm all about. And you got caught slipping demons. You know, I mean, I think, I think the message that, that it's, it's, it is, this is what's so missing from Western Christianity is, you know, what you just said, father, like what at the core of that, and it's just so obvious is love Mm -hmm. that it's like, because what does that snatching back mean? Like, it means like, you don't have to be miserable. It's so good on this other side. Just come Mm -hmm. this way. (laughs) Like there is a way. And yes, there's some, you know, it's going to be at times frightening. It's going to be tough, painful, tough, difficult. It's going to be painful. You're going to have to die. Like, yes, <laughs> like it's the cross, not the couch. We don't wear couches yes. around our necks. We wear crosses. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. But that's, this is, I think that for so many people who are in that situation, they, they know how miserable they are. And they, they don't need to be told. Nobody needs to tell them how miserable. You can tell how miserable they are when they're yelling at, yelling at people in public and they're marching around with such anger and rage about how they're such victims and everything. And it's like, you, can, you don't have to be miserable anymore. You're going to have to deal with some stuff, but you don't have to be miserable. And it's like, here, here it is. Like, this is the way to not be miserable. And the person who's talking to you was, um, especially if they're a convert, like, like myself, I can genuinely say it to somebody like, look, you could look at my life and you, I was miserable. Like you could look at my life and you would think, oh, that's, that's fairy tale right there. That's a fairy tale. And it's like, nope, miserable, absolutely miserable depths of like hell, miserable. Amen. Right. And it's like, not, but not anymore. Life is with a much simpler life and all of that. And it's like, still working still repenting right but like knowing that there is joy in the world like oriented toward joy and it not being some sort of like ephemeral how would i ever get it and got to do all these things right it's just like no 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 no. just pray turn to christ repent and it's like there's the the joy just be it just becomes a thing and it's like that's the message that's missing Mm mm-hmm in a genuine way and it's not just like oh you're gonna go if you don't stop what you're doing you're going to hell and all the hellfire and all of this it's like no no no. what about joy in your life now Mm -hmm. what about the hell that you're in now what about christ raising you out of the hell that you're currently in, like at this moment that's right maybe i maybe i've just been like the prodigal son's brother for too long and the Mm. loosest sense of the word but my cell is always not like Myself or people, a lot of times, it's just like, yeah, I don't really. Joy is something that is always there, but my cell generally is is like your anger and your depression and your loneliness and stuff like that. Like it'll actually just like start to mean something. It like mm-hmm. won't be this like because that was a big moment of healing for me. Like coming into the church is like this like idea of like this stuff didn't just happen in a vacuum. It's not just happening to like an empty sky and you're yelling at nobody. Like this stuff is defining to you. It's built parts of you. And like, if you're feeling it, like there's a reason why you're feeling it. It's not just some general malaise having to do with some like unknown assailant, you know, quote unquote, like from your past that if you had just, if your parents had just been better, if your school had just been better, if your church had just been better, you would be happy. But you know, unfortunately, those people ruined everything for you. My, my cell is generally like, there's still days that like, I still feel angry and lonely and, and, and bitter and, you know, messed up and everything. But it's like, well, that just means something now. It means like, and not only that, but there's a solution. There's a solution. Yeah, that's it right there. Actually yeah. go and do something about it. And like, not only that, but when you can look at someone genuinely in the eye and like, I kind of know what you're going through. You know, the problem is with that too, is, and I just, uh, I, I'm sure I'm wrong. Well, I have to say that, right? Cause I, I can't make an absolute statement, but I just think that there isn't enough people actually experiencing what we're talking about. That's a big problem. You know, it's just another reason why we wanted, why I wanted this project was hopefully to help people to get on board to start experiencing that repentance in their life really and start experiencing joy because it's very difficult to talk about these things and like I think I think if I can try to be charitable there's a lot of church folk and clergymen who haven't experienced forgiveness and repentance and joy amen and so they don't really know how to lead it so like and god bless them like they're just you know they teach morality um, they keep a good administrative ship. There's all those things, but it's like, what's really needed is our, our shepherds, clergy, and, and faithful people, lay people who actually experience the forgiveness of, of the Lord and repentance and are living that life that Jesus talked about. That's, that's what's that's We don't have enough of that. that. That's all I can say. And I mean, um, and it's not because the church is broken. It's just because, um, because the, because 
if the church was broken, then I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right. The reason why I can, I'm, I'd like to, I, I am throwing myself in that category is because like Cyprian, you know, I, I am, I have and am repenting and man, life is so good. Right. And it's not like um, prosperity gospel. Right. It's like, it has nothing to do with that. Um, but that's what these people need to hear. Um, and that's not what people are hearing. Cause I just think there isn't, there aren't people really experiencing. So that, so it's this weird, there, there's another, there's another level of work that needs to be done in this sense. But I just think um, the more people that can get to this understanding of the royal path and it, and it, it scales up and scale scales down. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't, it isn't just about LGBTQ alphabet soup stuff. It's everything. It's race, it's economics, it's mm -hmm. class. It, it's all of it. Like, because it's 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 having the mind of Christ. The royal path is another way of, of truly having the mind of Christ. So that's stop. that's what's needed, you know. Stop. Full stop. Full stop. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Guys. We're at, we're at two hours, by the way. Yeah. So I am going to switch it up a little bit, and I should have warned you guys about this, but I'm going to uh -oh. bam so you guys can think about it. Okay. What is your guys's like? I, I hesitate to use the word favorite because favorite, I don't have a favorite, but what is your favorite a psalm that really sticks out to you? Because I know mine. And so I can give you guys oh, a 50, 50. 50 is amazing. 50 is 50 is 50 is the bar. Like 50 yes. is like 50 is the good one. Like that's the one that's like, I didn't, I could not memorize anything. But for some yeah. reason, when I came into the church, I had the Nicene Creed and Psalm 50 down pretty quick. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's God. It, I, I've never been able to memorize anything my entire life. But I had this experience with Psalm 103. Uh, I don't know. Uh, th I'm reading it off of can the you, Cathisma. Can you, start, can you start it? Sure, sure. So what I liked about this psalm is, is it orders everything. So it's, um, it's a long one, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll read bits of it. But it's the blessed Lord on my soul, or my God, thou art become exceedingly magnified. As put on praise and majesty, you cover thyself as light as with a garment. So here's where we go. So imagine this is the, my experience with the psalm was it was a blank slate. And this is God building creation, right? So who covers thyself as light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who supporteth his chambers in the waters, who appointed the clouds for his ascent, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers of flaming fire, who established the earth upon its sure foundations. It shall not be moved forever and ever. The deep like a garment is his mantle. The water shall stand upon the mountains at their rebuke. They shall flee. At the voice of thy thunder, they shall be afraid. The mountains rise up in the place to go down to the place which thou, which thou hast founded for them. Like he's ordering everything. He has placed everything where it should be. He's entered the springs into the valleys, the water shall run among the mountains, they shall get a drink to the beasts of the field, the wild ashes shall wait to quench their thirst, by them, by them shall the fowls of the air make their habitation. They shall give voice from the midst of the rocks, he watered the mountains from his chambers, there shall be satisfied with the fruit of thy works, he causes the grass for, uh, to grow for the cattle, again, green earth for the service of man, that he may bring forth uh for they bring for bring forth bread out of the earth and why make it by the heart of man to make his face cheerful and bread strengthen man's heart the trees of the plain shall be satisfied lebanon that was a, uh, which thou hast planted there shall the chair, uh, sparrows make their nest the house of the heron is chief among them so it just continues to go on it's like this is this order there's like this nature there's this order this is the building blocks that god is like built and that was like one of the first times that like i've been kind of sucked into a psalm like that where I was, I, you know, like no images, but I felt like I was like kind of being explained, like this is what's happening. Like this chewing on this. What's that, Father? Like chewing on it, like really, like. Yeah, like digesting. Chewing on, digesting, and getting. Yeah, on. like really, like getting it sink from my head to my heart and back to my head and back to my heart, where I was like getting like the poetic language because, like, on the surface, the Psalms, you know, I don't mean to sound insulting, because I love the Psalms. They, they he, David and the authors use a lot of different phrases multiple times. A lot of times yeah. if you're in church and it's a long service, you're like, have we not read this already? Like, I mean, maybe we have, but like, it sounds kind of the same. It's kind of sounds like, you know, he's using the same phrases over and over again, but it's been my experience since as part of my rule, I, I pray Psalms and I pray different Psalms, 
that it's like, wait, no, this is dealing with something completely different than this part. Like this is talking about like God's whole interaction with Israel. Like there's parts where they're literally talking about like Babylonians capturing Israelites and be like, sing us a song of Israel. And then the, the Israelites are like, if I forget Israel, like let my hand be cut off, let my tongue be forfeit. Like, it's like absolutely incredible. And like, that's not even like, you know, deliver me from my enemies for they're stronger than I. Like, it's not even like those golden like bits. Those like one little lines, like the Kathisma I'm reading right now is fantastic. It's like, I'm just like, it's hitting every point is just hitting and hitting and hitting. But I remember Psalm 103 being the first one where I was like, hmm. oh, I see what's going on with, because I've never really got poetry before. But like, I was like, I'm getting what he's doing here. I'm it's getting like how video. God is working. What's that, Father? I think we're videos. A Christian must have the soul of a poet. Uh, yeah, because that was about the same time where I listened to a wonderful priest monk. Um, again, I'm not going to name him, you know, because it's kind of a criticism, but not really, because I love this man. But he, um, the poetic language of what he says, it's the poetic language. It's like why you can find so many things like, quote unquote, they're hypocritical within the church. Like Father Cosmos. Uh, okay. Forgive me. Sorry. <laughs> I knew he was going to like, do that. <laughs> um, he would be like, you never criticize a bishop. It is forbidden to criticize a bishop. He's never said this. I'm just making an example. He, he's never said this. I'm just making an example. He's like, you never criticize a bishop. And then like 10 minutes later in the talk, he'd be like, and this idiot bishop, <laughs> like, so, but like, it's the poetic language of what he's talking about. Because, yeah, you should never criticize a bishop, but there are idiot bishops. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in the, if you're not in the right frame of mind, like, that might seem hypocritical, but mm. it's never struck me that way. It's like, you know, to an extent, it's like, I'm not a hypocrite. I contain multitudes. Like, there's a lot of things going on in here. Like, they don't necessarily contradict. They just go in different directions. So, I'm well, done. It was, it's, it's very intense. I mean, I, re I, read, I read the Psalter the way through uh in during great length i was trying to do a kathisma a day but did, that didn't always didn't always pan out because sometimes it was too much oh yeah like what it was too said. intense like sometimes i get done and i'd be like that was way too intense 100 percent. way too much way too much going on there wait like just the it's very yeah it's very yeah very intense very yeah. intense that's all the I demons really hate psalms so the minute you like start to let up a little bit in your attention, you get hit left and right and left and right and left and right back and top and forward and under and everything. Father, you I'm sure. Favorite you... father. Yeah. Um, Psalm like, well, Septuagint Psalm 90, but like Psalm 91 um is one Psalm 33 is another one. Three, yeah. Um, that's, yeah, it's 32 in the Septuagint, but Psalm 33, it's like, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him and upon them that put their trust in his mercy. And just, um, I've had moments when, you know, just that has been a complete um, shelter for me in real dark times and stuff. And it speaks of the majesty of God and um, just his, his ability to save. And um, yeah, I've 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 read that psalm in the darkest moments of my life, and it's it's so yeah. I I'd I'd say yeah, Psalm thirty three ninety one's there too. You know, you know, um, trading upon the the cobra, <laughs> you know, and the and the 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 dragon and the cobra, the ass, the lion, you know. But yeah, Psalm thirty three. So. Oh, I had a I had a question. This is something that came up. Um, what's the deal with the unicorns? Like, there's units. <laughs> what's What's this all about? You know, um, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter loves me so much. I, I, she has this brass unicorn I took from her. <laughs> <laughs> I want my unicorn back, Daddy. Why'd you take my unicorn? um i have a thing for unicorns unicorns are awesome and mm. uh, yeah they're a symbol of christ you know and okay. uh, um, yeah they're also you know in the scriptures you know 
Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the unicorn um, being a, a, an early Christian symbol for Christ, you know, uh, mm. his purity, his strength, his virtue. Uh, yeah. Unicorn. It's interesting. I mean, I, I recall com coming across every time I would come across unicorn, it would just like throw me for a loop because I hadn't re I hadn't even realized that unicorns were in the scriptures. Like I didn't oh, yeah. realize that that's where they came from. So it's very yeah, interesting. They come from. Yeah. One yeah my, very interesting. One of my favorite stories about and I'm going to embarrass someone, but this was like a legit moment as uh, we were um, it was during early, 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 early. We're talking like maybe May of 2020. If maybe even earlier than that and we had tried this thing as a parish where we were going to get together on zoom and read the services together and one of them a beloved brother loved this guy to death but he was reading it and he came across the phrase uh, a sack butt <laughs> and he it was something and he said something about sack butt and he started laughing really hard and like i was really relieving to me because i was laughing internally like <laughs> I mean, I was a different person back then, but I was kind of probably zoning out and I heard sack butt and I got my attention again. And I was like, and then I heard him struggling with it and started laughing. And I even heard like his wife be like, dude, like get together. Like, and like, it was like, it was really like a genuine, like good moment of just being like, you could only understand this if you're Orthodox, like, you know, to a degree of saying like this word, and it just sounds funny, you know, it's just like sack butt. It's just like, I, I'm sure it's something serious, but like God, you know, I mean. It's a bagpipe. Is that? Oh, is there that you go. It's it a bagpipe. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to go play my sack butt, but, uh, you know. It's appropriate for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, the last thing I wanted to say was I read this off a YouTube uh, video on the comment section so take it for what it is but there's mm -hmm. some interesting poetic language there of somebody said i watched a video of a, a computer whatever of the destruction of sodom and gomorrah it was like the orthodox meme squad or something like that mm. uh, of i think they took footage from pompeii or something i don't know and they made it so it seemed like it was the sodom and gomorrah and somebody had written that like to this day quote unquote the spots where sodom and gomorrah are still nothing's able to grow there like the destruction was that complete like the soil is that wasted that like you can't do anything with where those cities were so i mean maybe it was lot's wife you know salt going all over the soil or something like that mm -hmm. i don't know but like it it was interesting and i, was, I don't know if that's true I, I mean it could be i just would not be shocked if it was but you know don't touch god's wrath I've heard that said in another video, don't touch God's wrath. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to end it with that. All right. So, um, thank you everyone for listening. Um, and, uh, I guess we'll plug the playlist again, again, maybe we'll come back then do a part two of ecumenism because yep, I yep. do well, think it's so funny too, because, you know, we've been doing the same thing and, totally unrelated to everything i, I chose saint theodora for the saint today mm. okay <laughs> she you know the toll houses no the saint theodora who lived in the men's monastery i told it, it totally wasn't even about like the cross-dressing how things. interesting just, yeah 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 mean? father do you want to talk about her for a second i chose yeah, I, just, mom. I mean just it, it's just interesting so saint theodora she's the saint who was tempted into adultery and just um, was so struck by it, she ran to repentance. And um, there's all kinds of cool little details in her story, but she essentially didn't go to a women's monastery because she knew that her husband would probably like look for her there. So she dressed as a man and went to, it went to a men's monastery to live out her repentance. And at one point she was sent by the abbot um, to go somewhere and then, um, to like do an obedience and while she was there um, a woman basically had accused Saint Theodora of falling into fornication and 
impregnating her, which was impossible, right? Mm -hmm. But St. Theodore didn't do anything with it, just took care of the child and all this stuff, you know, and just suffered shame and was put out as this like terrible fornicator. Um, and then it was like after St. Theodore, Theodore died, it was revealed to the abbot that like actually um, it was a woman <laughs> and had been this righteous woman who had like silently suffered under this wow. false accusation Wow. And, did, and didn't do anything with it and they you know he like uncovered her breast to show like the brothers like it's a woman they're like shocked you know it's like oh my gosh and um and then the woman who accused you know saint theodore of like fornicating and impregnating her like confessed and went mad and all this stuff so it's um it's appropriate <laughs> yeah she's great but the point was is like it's just funny because i had i had her picked and then we just went, you know, as, as everyone knows, we generally, we don't do like really any kind of pre whatever. And it's like, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Perfect. I, I remember listening to the father Cosmos and he was talking about St. Xenia and he's talking about, uh, <laughs> I love this man so much, but he was talking um, about how she wore her husband's coat. And like out of the, he was like talking, he was like, you knew where, and by the way, this has nothing to do with a, a transgender thing. And just like <laughs> randed for like the next 10, 15 minutes about like how this is like dangerous and blah, blah, blah. She's, just like she's this. commemorated today, right? Oh, As yeah, we record her, this? Her glorification. It was her oh, glorification. glorification. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, for, I forgot to bring my daughter up for um, a blessing on Sunday. I completely forgot, but so did the other Zenyas. So I'm going to, I'm going to let it roll. So, um, okay, yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna plug the playlist, I guess. Um, and then I think we will do a part two on ecumenism. Yep, yep. I think that's next week, God willing, we'll see. Um, but yeah, cause I think that there, cause there are some things we should probably talk about about that still. Um, and I mean, I'm still all about trying to get everything we can out of the creed. So anyway, I think that's it. So we'll see you next week. And thanks for, hey, I remembered. Thanks for having a good night. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.